First, let me tell you. All I will talk about in this series, it's a three-part series, will be related to high to bury stocking rates and the grazing way that needs to be done to avoid overgrazing. Why do I, I, I am so passionate about high to very high stocking rates? Because that's what determines profitability on a ranch. Selective grazing, by definition, harvests only a portion of what's available in a paddock. It can be from 10 to 30% to 50%. The rest, the leftovers, will be left behind. And then the cows are moved to the next paddock. This means that they move faster around your farm or ranch and they come back sooner to regraze the regrowth. Total grazing, on the other hand, has a higher harvest efficiency where we harvest from 80 to 90% of what's available in the paddock before moving the cows on. Because it takes longer for them, or they stay longer on a given acreage, that means we have a much longer rest period before they return to regrace the regrowth. So, under selective grazing, the best species, because the cows select, will be taken down severely and the least desirable species, weeds and shrubs and briars will be left untouched and the cows will move on to the next paddock. When they return, they will again hit the fresh regrowth of those more desirable plants and not harvest or consume the, not, the by now other plants or parts of plants that are not as palatable and especially the ones that are briars, shrubs and undesirable species. Then on the serious, serious this talking takes place, we will get overgrazing in our desirable plants and overresting on the non-desirable plants. And as we know, stocking rate determines profitability. So having a destocking plan uh, should only be for extreme drought, not for two or three times every 10 years. That's not doable. So this happened because under selective grazing, by definition, the rest periods are shorter and in a drought year, the forage will get overgrazing overgrazed, which means it will be regrazed before it has fully recovered and its energy reserves in roots and crowns haven't been fully replenished. Because of this, we will have the following. Death of desirable species by overgrazing and by overshading, larger interplant spacings due to the same but mostly from overshading by trying to graze tall, no sunlight will reach the growing points when all that big mass of forage is trampled down and it covers the seedlings and especially the growing points to where they die from lack of sunlight and we can see larger interplant spacings. As you know, stems consume energy and leaves produce energy. Stems consume energy by respiring and leaves produce energy by photosynthesis. So which type of grazing will give you a better leaf to stem ratio in the regrowth? Well, of course, when you mow your lawn, your lawn, what comes up is leaves. When you graze selectively and leave a lot of stems behind, consuming energy by respiring, the leaf to stem ratio in the following regrowth will be poor. This means that there will be less energy available for regrowth, for storing as energy reserves, and to produce humus, because humus is produced by the fat bodies of microorganisms that are fed by the sugary root exudates produced by photosynthesis. If that energy produced by photosynthesis 
some of it is being used for respiring in the stems, there will be less energy available for the sugary root exudates. When we consider how plants grow and how they regrow after different types of grazing, we know and we understand why total grazing gives you a much better leaf to stem ratio than selective grazing. This has to do also with hormones, like when you graze a mature sorghum Sudan pasture and they only strip the leaves off and leave the stem, if you don't mow it, the stems will exert a hormone, uh, will exert a force by a hormone produced called auxin that will in inhibit the regrowth of tillers and new leaves. In our total grazing course, online course, you will learn exactly why a total grazing is a must when you do high stocking to very high stocking rates, which is necessary for profitability at these economic times. You will learn how to do environment restoration, increase your humus, and finally, your profits. You will also improve your forage biodiversity with the best species returning. This total grazing online course will improve your profitability as it is based on proven low-cost biological methods that really work. And I fully explain how nature created the best soils in the world by using these same methods. We are just emulating nature, but with the understanding of how humus is really built and how plants physiology works.